Hello once again as we continue our journey through trigonometry. In this screencast we're going to once again be trying to find the values of circular functions given certain information about one of the circular functions and hopefully enough information to determine in which quadrant the arc lies. So here's our problem and it is somewhat similar to the other one but just a little bit different. We're given a value of sine of x equal to minus 0.71 and the tangent of x being greater than 0. So again, you should perhaps pause the screencast and stop and think about how you might approach this problem and what tools you might have at your disposal to help solve it. And always remember, I'm going to present one way, but there are oftentimes more than one way to solve a particular problem. Okay, so here again we have the tools that we have uh, to solve this, and down below here we have the particular problem stated that we are going to try to solve. And again, given the value of the sine function, we will quite quickly turn to the Pythagorean identity and at least be able to determine cosine squared. And that's where we have to know the quadrant in which we have here. And what we're, what we're given here is a value for sine. And so we, we do know that the sine of x is negative. And that tells us that we're in either quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. But we're also given that tangent is greater than 0. And therefore, we can say we're in quadrant 3. So the arc x lies in quadrant 3. And that will then be able to help us determine the sine that we use with our square root for cosine. So here's the setup then for determining the value of cosine. And again, we've started with the Pythagorean theorem and have substituted in the value for sine of x. And as we go through this computation, we will see that cosine squared of x will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.5041. Which is equal to 0.4959. Because we've already determined that x is in the third quadrant, we do know that cosine of x is negative, and so we can conclude cosine of x equals minus the square root of 0.4959. Now, we can always haul out our calculator and get a decimal approximation for this value, but in reality it's not really necessary. We can leave, for, at least for the time being, uh, the cosine as minus this square root. And now, of course, our task is to determine the other four circular functions. And that's what we will be doing here. And we'll be basically be using the reciprocal identities and some definitions of tangent and cotangent. So our first one is secant of x, which we know is 1 over the cosine of x. And since we have the value for cosine of x, we can simply substitute that in. And again, it's a negative square root. I'll put the negative in front of the fraction, and we get our value for secant of x. And again, I'll just leave the answer in that form. And then the next one is cosecant of x, which again we know is 1 over sine of x. And now I can make the substitution, and again this is a negative number, negative 1 over 0.71. And again, we'll use our calculator a little bit later, but for right now, we're just going to leave the answer in that form. And now we can attack tangent of x 
and cotangent of x. And tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. And again, we have those values. Notice that we have sine of x is minus 0.71 and cosine is minus a square root. So if we substitute those in, again we've got a negative divided by a negative. So tangent of x will be 0 0.71 divided by the square root of 0.4959. And finally, the cotangent of x we will just complete as 1 over the tangent of x. And again, that will be a positive number and will be the square root of 0.4959 divided by 0.71. And there we have now determined the six values of the circular functions. And here is a summary of the results that we have. And again, at this stage, I did use my calculator and calculated these decimal approximations for five of the six circular functions. We were given an exact value for sine of x as minus 0.71. So there's another example of how to use basically the Pythagorean identity and the definitions of the other circular functions determine all values of the circular function. So long for now.